Let's be honest here. We've all thought about it. Setting sail on the high seas, living the life of a pirate, peg leg, eye patch, stating yar. Once I even almost bought a parrot. It probably wouldn't have been so much fun though. For every movie that makes the life of piracy seem like a great time, there's a lot of facts that they're omitting. For instance, sea life at the time wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. With no showering and nothing but salted food to eat. But in the golden age of piracy, if you were good at it, life wasn't so bad, I guess. The problem is, much like other things that we've looked into, myths have enlarged the idea of pirates in our heads. Movies, television, games, novels, hell! Even theme park rides have taken the reality of the pirate and made it just as mythic as anything else. So once again, we're going to take a look at the realities and myths about the golden age of piracy on the high seas. Most individuals of the time turned to piracy for the fact that they couldn't survive otherwise. Most were in their early 20s and had the skills to work at sea yet couldn't survive on the wage that the merchant vessels or the Royal Navy were paying. Combine this with the fact that the living conditions were terrible, led to what was known as the Golden Age of Piracy. During this Golden Age, there was a large group of young men with the talent to thrive at sea, as well as a high number of ships that were sailing the shipping lanes of the known world. Opportunity called, and myths and legends were born. So let's get this out of the way right up front. Pirates weren't known for burying their loot. Think about this for a moment. You just attacked and plundered a vessel off the coast. Your ship is now loaded down with more riches than you can possibly count. What should we do? I know. Let's bury it in a deep hole in the ground. Personally, if I was on your crew, I would have just shot you for suggesting the idea. The common image is that pirates usually plundered gold, silver, and gems, etc. The reality was that pirates would steal anything that they could find. Food was common, as well as usual trade goods, such as spices and animal hides. Now, it is possible that some pirates did bury treasure with the idea of returning to it later. However, the pirates' life expectancy wasn't very long, so odds are that they would return to their pirate strongholds, of which there were many, or a place that they weren't wanted and spend it as quick as possible. Most pirates weren't opening bank accounts is all I'm saying. Another misconception is that all pirates were outlaws. Technically speaking, the job of piracy, let's be honest, it's more of a calling, was a legitimate occupation. They just called it privateering. The definition of a privateer is someone who engages in a maritime warfare under a commission. Various royal navies, and trust me, they all did it, would hire large, well-armed vessels to engage in the act of piracy under contract. The contract would specify who the crews could attack, usually being the vessels flying under the flag of an enemy as well as what loot would be divided amongst their crew and what was returned to the hiring country. So you could actually be paid to plunder and pillage your way along the ocean waves. What a time to be alive! Y you know, other than the scurvy. Now some believe that only men were pirates, but the idea of a pirate is someone who went against the social norms. Usually in the stealing and murdering kind of a way, but not only. Pirate crews were known to include women all the time, who were just as murderous as their male counterparts. Two of the most famous pirates were actually Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, both of whom sailed with Blackbeard the pirate, who was probably the most well-known and famous pirate. The guy is a museum in North Carolina. I've been there. It's actually pretty cool. So let's think of some of the common things that we know about pirates and figure out if they're real. Talk like a pirate day? Not a real thing. While there was obviously sailing lingo and most likely pirates had special ways of talking, no one said "r" or matey. I know I'm disappointed too. Our idea of how pirates spoke was mostly taken from Hollywood. Walk the plank? Unlikely. The most documented form of punishment was known as keel hauling, in which the victim was tied to the ship and dragged along the bottom of the hull, along the barnacles. You either died from the cuts and infection or you drowned. Peg legs and eye badges? Possible. Life on a ship wasn't easy, with piracy being even harder, so injuries were most likely to occur. Plus, it's not like they had a fully stocked hospital below the decks. Pirate strongholds and islands? Very real. In the Pirates of the Caribbean films, the characters would constantly return to the island of Tortuga, which was a lawless pirate stronghold. Tortuga was a real island in the Caribbean, and was the home to thieves, pirates, and escaped slaves who would use it as a launching point to attack Spanish ships. Now, as the notoriety of the island spread, it attracted bloodthirsty pirates from all across the known world. The place became a pirate stronghold, even including a castle and defenses. Many of these strongholds existed into the late 17th century and into the 1800s, such as Port Royal, Clue Bay, or even Barataria Bay, which was located in Louisiana. Skull and crossbones, are those true? 
Not every pirate flew the Jolly Roger, which was the name of the Skull and Crossbones flag. The most famous pirates came up with their own flags. While most of them were black on white, the actual content would vary. I mean, you didn't want to be the pirate that just copied everyone else, did you? That's just lazy. Stick to the code. That's what old Jack Sparrow always said. In reality, there wasn't a universal pirate code that everyone lived by. Every ship would have its own articles of conduct while sailing. And may the gods have mercy on the poor souls who broke a captain's rules. The codes were commonly referred to how everyone was to be treated, as well as how the loot would be divided amongst the crew. Apparently, it's documented that personal disputes would not be dealt with on the ship, but would have to wait until the crew made landfall. The most famous and well-known code was that of the pirate Edward Lowe, who was a particularly bloodthirsty murderer who was only active from 1722 until around 1725-ish. But it was said that he had plundered more than a hundred ships during that three-year span. So while the life of the Golden Age pirate might not have been everything that Hollywood made it out to be, I guess it wasn't all that bad. I mean, as long as you overlooked the scurvy, poor living conditions, high amount of salted meats for a diet, and the probability of death by hanging. I mean, if you ignore all of that, it sounds like a great job. I wonder if it has health benefits. No, no, wait, we, we established that. No hospital on board. No matter what, though, these Golden Age pirates deserve our respect. They've gone down in history as some of the most epic individuals in all of our time. Now, if you want to get more information on some of the more famous pirates, let us know in the comments down below so that we can cover some more of this and deep dive into what actually happened in the Golden Age of Piracy. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to subscribe to Tales of Earth for more urban legends, factual history, and just overall fun stuff about our world.